Hello stream leaders. In this video, you're going to learn how to build your very own Rust code editor right inside a Streamlit app. And so let's dive in. So in this tutorial, you're going to build out this pretty simple Rust code editor. Um, so you're going to see here that the left part here, what you're seeing is where we're going to put in the code component um, written in Rust. So you have this drop down, and then for this example, we're printing out a hello world, which is kind of like the traditional rite of passage when learning how to code. So if you click on the explanation here, you'll be able to have a look at what does each of the lines here are doing, right? Print LN is to print, and then followed by the text inside here, and then after we package it into this main function, we're going to compile it, which is a way of Rust in running the code that we have. So you're using Rust C and then hello.rs. Hello.rs is a file that we created based on this function that we have written. And then after compiling it, you're going to run it. So you're going to use dot, which is like the current directory, slash hello which is the compiled version of the code. So let's implement all of these three steps by clicking on the run code button. And then to the left here, you're gonna see that instantaneously it is running the code. So it's doing this, it's writing out the hello.rs file based on the content here. It's the same thing right here as well, code content. And once we have the hello.rs, it's gonna compile it and it's gonna run it. So all of these three steps will be performed uh, in the app. And then finally, we have the code output, which is the output printed out after running the uh, hello, the compiled file. And here we have hello world Rust works, just to verify that it works. Okay. And if you select another example, like for variable binding, we're defining it in various scenarios. Like here, we're going to use uh, x, y, z in order to define uh, integer values, Boolean values, and also strings. And then we're going to print it out here, uh, similar to in Python where we're using F strings um, to print out the content. And if we're running it, you're gonna see that the content is right here, and then the code output uh, will be displayed below here after it has been compiled. And if you modify the content here, let's see if I write with three exclamation mark, and click on apply, which is kind of like save, saving the file. And then I'm writing the code. And then you can see that I get the updated data here with the three exclamation mark, which is what I have updated just a moment ago. Okay, so let's have a look into the code and how that relates back to the uh, front end part. So this is the code repo for building out your very own uh, code editor. And here we're pretty much making kind of like a tutorial style uh, code editor where we have the Rust code in the content directory here. So we have hello.rs, which is displayed right here in the um, example code editor box here. And then when we make a selection, we're going to select that file, the hello.rs. If we select a variable binding as the option here, we're going to select the contents of variable.rs, which is coming from this one, variable.rs. And you could feel free to add additional files in here, additional Rust files with other examples. Um, and then the drop down should be able to have more options. All right, so let's have a look at the app itself. So you're seeing that essentially we're using Streamlit as the front end UI. We're using sub process in order to run the Rust code. And then we're using Streamlit A's editor um, in order to run the, the code editor that you see here. And then we're setting the page config so that the layout of the app will be wide. It'll fit the page width um, to 100%. And then we're using the page icon as the crab here, um, the crustacean as in Rust, right? Crustra crustacean. R-U-S-T is a part of the word. Um, and then we're defining the custom function here to run the Rust code. 
Um, so as an input argument, we're taking in the code and then we're essentially, you know, like taking the contents from the code box here and then writing it out as a code.rs file. So essentially we're reading in the code and then we're writing it out as another code so that when you make edits to this box, it will be updated to the code file that we're writing out to. And then we're gonna uh, run that upon clicking on run code. Okay, so here we're creating code.rs and then we're gonna run it using popen method from the sub process uh, module. And then for printing out the output, we're gonna have st, uh, the standard output here, which will be uh, displayed later on when we run the uh, function here. So once we click on the run code here, you're gonna see that to the right in the second hand column here, we're gonna print out the code content and the code output, which is right here. For the first part here, you're gonna see that column um, index number one is the second column. So the first column is index number zero. So upon, you know, like clicking on the submit button, the run code button, it will run this block with the code content and the code output, as you can see here in the generate output function. We're creating session state for Rust code and editor code so that it'll be in memory um, as we interact with the widgets, like the editor box here and the submit button here. So as we interact with all of the widgets, it will be saved in the app's memory uh, in the session state. Line number 34, st.title, we're printing out the name of the app, which is right here, Rust Instrument. And then here in the first column for this entirety of the code block here is what you're seeing in the app. So we start from the code inputs and then we have a select box and then we have the two options here, the hello world and the variable binding. So if you're thinking of adding additional um, files to the content folder, like additional RS files, you could add additional dictionary here to allow the additional functions to show up in the select box here. And then we pretty much use st.caption to print out the code that is being selected, which is right here, the code that is being selected. And then we're using markdown and also um, the expander box to display the explanation for each of the selected uh, code. So when we're selecting hello.rs, we're gonna display the following markdown. And if we're selecting variable.rs, we're gonna show uh, the following um, contents. And then here in this segment of the code, upon compiling the Rust file, we're going to finally uh, use the generate output function here as part of the callback function when we click on the run code button here. So if we click on run code, it will run the generate output and the generate output will be here. And it will take in from the session state variable editor code and the run Rust code will also do the same as well. So it's gonna use the editor code session state variable and then print it out to the code content and then display the result from uh, running the Rust code, uh, which is this one, and then printing it out in the uh, code output um, section here. And yeah, so you can see that this is essentially 78 lines of code. Um, I actually commented out uh, some segments here that I experimented with. Um, yeah, so it's less than 80 lines of code and you have this pretty cool Rust code editor uh, built in Streamlit. Uh, essentially, you could replace the language to any other language that you are interested in. You can make it R, you can make it Go. Um, so yeah, essentially any language and it's actually good for education because you could provide X explanation um, to each lines of code here um, in the expander box. So here you can make a kind of like a tutorial style um, self explanation here so that users could go through the app and pretty much, you know, uh, learn what 
what the function here is doing. And it's pretty intuitive, uh, very simple, and we're using as much uh, pure functionality from Streamlit as much as possible here. And the only third party that we're using is the subprocess module. Um, and also the Streamlit is a third party component for the code editor box here that you see. Yeah. So let me know in the comment section down below if you found this helpful. Um, and yeah, let me know how you're using it for your own uh, projects. And if you reached this far in the video, please drop a balloon emoji in the comment section. And until next time, happy streamlining.